Welcome back to another FJ's Do Do This at Home. What we're going to make in the garden today is a water clock. So this is a fabulous little experiment and it'll teach you more about the nature of science experiments than you really think. Um, you need some fairly simple apparatus. Uh, you need an empty plastic, one of the large uh, water or drinks bottles without the label on. Uh, you need a timer of some kind, uh, a sharpie or a permanent pen, and you need a skewer, or I'm gonna use a very small Phillips screwdriver here. And obviously the vital ingredient, um, the hints in the name, you need some water. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pierce a little hole uh, right near the bottom of the drinks bottle. Uh, but there's an interesting bit of physics here. You might actually find it easier to pierce the hole if it's a very flexible bottle, if you fill it right to the brim first. So let's go and fill the bottle right up. Right, so let's fill the bottle right up to the top. I'm gonna to use the garden hose because we're not on a hose pipe van at the moment. So there we go. And um, like I said to you, um, it will be easier um, to pierce the hole if you struggle with a very flexible plastic, if you do it with it full of water. And I, what I mean by that is absolutely full to the brim. So we're almost there. I might as well tell you, it's because water's not compressible, so that should make it easier. Try not to get too soaked. Right, there we go. Put the lid on and we're ready to put the uh, hole in our homemade water clock. Okay, so now for the messy bit, and you're bound to get wet doing this, but who cares anyway, because it's nice and sunny. Um, go easy with the skewer or the screwdriver, you know, don't have your hand right behind it, and try to put a little hole in the bottom, and then you probably want to get your finger over that hole pretty quickly. But in fact, there's not too much pressure in there. Um, the physics of this means that the water actually stays in. Now, um, there's lots of things you'll learn from this, but one of them is pick up the bottle by the lid, because obviously if you pick it up here, you're going to increase the pressure inside and squirt water out the hole. So, now we're ready to turn it into a water clock. So, now for the moment of truth. I'm just going to mark the very top up here with my Sharpie, with a line, and I'm going to put zero on that. Okay. So um, that's t equals zero, time equals zero. So um, I've got a stopwatch here, or my, my other watch seems to have packed in. So I'll uh, get rid of that. I've got a stopwatch and I'm going to start the clock running now and we're going to calibrate it. So getting soaked. There we go. And there's the water coming out, forming a bit of a funny jet and I'm gonna time it for exactly a minute. And then what I'm gonna do is put another mark on the bottle and that's our one minute marker. So that's one minute gone by. So I'm going to try not to squeeze the bottle, put a line on it there and that's one minute. And I'm gonna let it keep leaking and draw on uh, where two minutes is. And I think you might be surprised, even taking into account the shape of the bottle, where the next line's gonna be. Okay, so we're getting close to two minutes on the stopwatch now. And as we reach two minutes, careful not to squeeze the bottle, draw the next line on, and I'll come around here and put the number two on. Um, so that's our two minute marker point and we're going to continue to see how far we can get and calibrate our water clock. So here we go, coming up to three minutes on the stopwatch. So another line carefully drawn on and three minutes there. Okay. Um, I often find the pen doesn't write very well on the plastic um, after a while. There's some good physics behind that. So if you um, put a piece of um, sort of uh, tape on, the tape that you can write on, um, that's another way you can produce a really good scale. Anyway, I'll get this pen to work in a second and I'll write the three on properly before we get to uh, our four minute mark. And there we go, that's four minutes. So let's mark that on. Okay, and that's the uh, five minute point. So let's see if the pen works. There we go. 
five minutes and you'll notice the marks are getting closer and closer together so um, when you draw the next ones on you might want to put the numbers a bit smaller or swap them from side to side on the time scale. So we're at six minutes now and it's difficult to see but it is still leaking, it is still uh, dribbling away there. So that's the six minute point. So that's seven minutes. Good, and there's our eight minute point. Oh, the lines are really close together now. There's nine. Right, we made it, there's our 10 minute point. Hardly any different, just below the nine there, our right to 10 there. Okay, and this is our time scale in minutes. Not very easy to write on. So, let's have a look at what we've achieved. Well, there we go, there's our water clock and we've got the scale on it. I'm not gonna go into the physics in detail of why the scale is non-linear. Um, it's just a bit of fun, but we managed to make it a 10 minute clock. Um, what you can do now is fill it back up again and uh, maybe try it against another stopwatch and see whether you've calibrated it correctly. Um, have a think about where half minutes might be. Anyway, um, it's a good experiment this and it really teaches you a lot about the nature of science experiments. I've given you some of the hints, but when I first started playing with it, um, I made a hole that was too big, then too small, then the lid was on too tight. And you go around in circles, but you make it work in the end. And that's true of all um, science experiments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be doing another Do Do This at Home fairly soon. And I look forward to seeing you then.